Hey, what's up guys, Ruff here. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Halo franchise, a franchise I'm sure a lot of you have come across in one form or another over the years. And currently there's a lot of discussion about what's been going on over the last decade or so and how things will continue, especially since 343 Industries claimed that Halo Infinite was the start of the next 10 years and that's turned out to be a disappointment. And people are just continuing their distrust of 343 Industries who was charged with the task of producing Halo games by Microsoft some time ago after Bungie had finished their role with the game. And a lot of people have said ever since Bungie left, it hasn't been the same. And due to some very poor choices by 343 Industries over the years, people do not have faith in this brand anymore. And Halo is trying to do something about that. So yesterday they made a very big announcement where they shared a shift. They are now going to call themselves halo studios instead of 343 studios and a lot of people are saying this is the classic uh, everything looks better with a toothpick bit where basically uh, it's just a name change and it doesn't mean a whole lot and the negative decisions made at 343 industries still remain and they don't have faith that this is really going to translate over to anything really changing with the direction of the halo franchise however to be fair a lot of the people responsible for the worst decisions at 343 industries have been let go over the years but again that damage to the reputation is one that is not simply shaken with a simple name change and on top of that people have just been waiting for something big to happen something to really revive this franchise and give people something to be really excited about and in their announcement on twitter in the accompanying video they also announced that halo is going to be shifting over to unreal engine 5 and how that'll play out with the appearance of this game is something we'll have to wait and see for now but while this has all been happening, a lot of people have been looking at the people responsible for Halo. And they're starting to question things. And they're questioning people who are making the game. They're questioning the role of Microsoft in all this, who I think is a much more looming presence than a lot of people think. And this tweet right here, and this screenshots like it, have been making the rounds on social media. I talked very briefly about this particular tweet in a video a few months ago. But I want to re-examine it because people are discovering it now. And it's crazy. So this individual here is named Nick. He's been involved with the production of Halo for some time here. And apparently he is going to be the creative designer for Halo Studios. And people are laughing at this because this is a very frightening and, you know, it's funny, but it's still a pretty frightening direction of this game if this is true. Because Nick just embodies the modern gaming industry, right? You look at their Twitter profile here. Of course, they're private because they can't take any criticism. And then they have a bunch of virtue signaling flags in their names that honestly contradict one another. But this guy has made some interesting tweets over the years about guns. He has a very bad view of guns. It makes him very uncomfortable, which makes this tweet crazy. So he said, I honestly don't think I could work on a game that glorifies or fantasizes modern guns. Call of Duty, Battlefield, RB6. I've had moments where I've struggled with Halo, but the weapons and world is pretty sci-fi, which creates a large enough separation from reality. Yes, this person will be responsible for creative decisions involving a first-person shooter when he is afraid of guns, including guns in a fictional setting. I mean, number one, right off the bat, like, if you can't separate fiction from reality, at the minimum, you probably shouldn't be working in this industry, but you especially shouldn't be working on these things if you can't separate fiction from reality involving guns when you're working on a first-person shooter. That is insane. That's like hiring a vegan to work at the slaughterhouse. None of this makes sense, and honestly reminds me of the uh, narrative director behind the latest Wolverine game, who hates white men, but then they're working on a protagonist who is a white man. And you have to think about these sorts of attitudes and propensities and how it might actually affect your job. Like, how is someone who has this sort of mindset with fiction versus reality involving guns, how can they work on a Halo game and give some really productive insight about where to go with things creatively? Like, it just seems very, very odd. But a lot of people have been focusing on this individual named Melissa Boone, who was featured in that promotional video for the shift over to Halo Studios. People have been clowning on her. They've been looking at her resume, seeing this whole about section. All of it is all just about diversity and equity and all these things. Even using the term 
Latin X, which uh, to my Hispanic viewers, I know a lot of you uh, do not like that term and people use it as a virtue signal. So feel free to share your thoughts about that term being included here. But people are also looking at her LinkedIn profile, which of course has this pride flag in it. And the reaction to this discovery and her involvement with Halo Studios has been very mixed. Some people think this is the craziest news ever and uh, they're doom saying about this. And then some people say this is no big deal at all. And I think there's some middle ground here, which I'm going to explain. So she is the chief of staff at Halo Studios, which is a role that shouldn't have much creative input. Typically, it just is a procedural thing, helping move resources where they need to go, people where they need to go, and not actually giving any sort of creative input whatsoever, if that's how their job is actually functioning, how it, it should be. But it really represents a lot more about who they allow into their company in the first place, and it really reflects on Microsoft. I think a lot of people are underestimating the role of Microsoft. After all, they own Halo, and also they have had a very great involvement with pushing DEI on levels that are really quite impressive, even when you compare them to the sweet babies of the world and stuff like that. So they've been on their social justice journey really for a while, but it started the most significantly in 2020 with this post saying addressing racial injustice, where they committed an additional $150 million of D and I investment and they would double the number of black and African-American employees in certain positions. And yeah, that's where it really began reacting to American social justice concerns back in 2020. And then this would, this sort of attitude would creep into games, of course, where we had this unbelievable uh, game guide here for video game developers released by Microsoft. You can see here, it's framed in a way that's supposed to allow game developers to learn and understand how to create games and uh, create characters that will make gamers feel included and represented in a positive way. And we got some amazing quotes and explanations from this guide. So referring to the creation of female characters, there's this part right here saying, are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? Are you... Are, are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? And do they have exaggerated body proportions? Which is funny because we just saw with Stellar Blade people freaking out, calling that unrealistic, even though it's based on a real life Korean model. And then you would look at games nowadays, like I, I swear the person who wrote this guy, they would have a stroke if they saw the latest promotion from the first Descendant. But anyways, they continue on in this guide to give many different checklists, basically some boxes to check off when you're making games, especially when it comes to uh, representation and authenticity, uh, almost putting like quotas on people. Like you have to have this many minorities for this many non-minorities and you have to follow this in order to make people feel safe playing your game. It's a lot of box checking and that's something that Microsoft does very regularly, including this year where they released this tweet, which is basically the meme, right? Big corporation literally on June 1st, the first day of Pride Month, making their annual Pride Month tweet where then they will basically stop talking about all this stuff as soon as June is over. And we saw another tweet coming from the Halo account that we looked at earlier, making this one within minutes of the Microsoft one, making this disaster. This was a disaster. Okay, you can see in this stunning and brave post they were not so stunning and brave and they locked the replies and the quotes were absolutely shredding this a lot of people kind of consider this like the modern state of the halo franchise when they're they're doing stuff like this it seems like they have gone so far off from just making fun games to now virtue signaling and doing all this extra stuff that people don't want and that is reflected by this survey that's been going around very recently that makes some pretty bold claims about how gamers feel and view DEI in their games. And I think it's very clear, and if it wasn't clear already from the current climate, this study says 95% of players don't care about inclusivity in games. And one of the reasons this happened to them is seeing things like forced inclusivity being associated with DEI and all this nonsense. And that shouldn't surprise anyone. The proof is in the pudding. If it wasn't obvious over the years, 2024 has been a wild year where 
DEI has been stomped out by gamers. It really has been. We have seen so many major titles failing, and one of the main things shared between all of them is that they had a focus on DEI, whether it's the gameplay itself or the attitude of the developers who worked on it. When people discover this stuff, they are turned off by it. They think it's a bunch of forced virtue signaling, and they are speaking with their wallets and they're not engaging with it. So seeing 95% of players in this poll saying they don't care about inclusivity in games, that's not surprising at all. And funny enough, it seems like Microsoft might have been making this realization earlier this summer, back in July. They made this headline saying, Microsoft laid off a DEI team, and its lead wrote in an internal email blasting how DEI is no longer business critical. Now, when this came out, Everyone was going, oh my God, based Microsoft, they're rejecting DEI, it's over, we're winning, blah, blah, blah. And people like myself said, wait a second, this isn't a rejection of DEI, this is a rebranding, much like the rebranding of 343 to Halo Studios, this is a rebrand of DEI in a not so subtle way, as we'll see. I talked about that post and the company and the rebrand that I was referring to just now, which is called Bridge. If you want the full breakdown of all that stuff, I'll put a link to this video in the description, but to sum it up very briefly, just for the purpose of this video, Bridge is a global initiative. It's basically sweet baby on steroids. They don't just want to put DEI stuff in your video games. They want it to be a part of every single company across the globe. In fact, in that previous video, we watched some clips from the CEO of Bridge who has made some very crazy claims like she wants companies to have every employee to the point where DEI and all these related things are just a part of your DNA. You don't even question it anymore. It's just a part of who you are and how you think and you just keep following through on this stuff without question. And they don't just want the CEOs of these companies to be following these, these protocols. They tried that initially and there was much more DEI focus, at least in name, and they realized that a lot of CEOs and higher ups, they were just doing this to check boxes and they didn't actually care about pushing any of these related agendas. So then they rebranded to Bridge where they're having this different acronym, which is a, a ridiculous one. The, the G stands for gap between uh, diversity and equity and, and all these things. It, it's so obnoxious. But anyways, this was an attempt to rebrand DEI. It's the same principles, different name. And they try to basically slither this way into many different businesses across the world. And this is the next big push. It's DEI just repackaged. And you can see some of their clients here, right? Uh, you can see sandwiched between the MasterCard Foundation, the United States of America Department of States, and the World Bank Group. You have the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, of course, Bill Gates was the founder of Microsoft, and this is relevant to this post right here from Kirsha, who has been really leading the charge with Bridge. She's the one who kind of broke this whole thing, uh, the most, let's just say, uh, popularized on social media and brought the most attention to it. And she made this post making a very interesting discovery back in this summer, right around when we saw that whole post about Microsoft firing their DEI team. So... Bridge and their CEO would make an appearance at a Microsoft panel at a convention, which obviously uh, that's a pretty big deal. They actually invited the CEO and they're talking about Bridge and their commitment to hashtag DI in the industry. And they're talking about sustainability and inclusivity and economics and all these things. They are involved with Microsoft in one way or another. And again, you have to dig very deep to find pretty much anything on some of these organizations. And that's kind of how Sweet Baby was, right? Sweet Baby was known by some, but eventually once word got out enough, man, it's crazy what a few people are doing and their impact on the industry. And that's the way a lot of groups like Bridge are. And Bridge is an even more bold initiative trying to do this on a global scale for all businesses. And clearly, Microsoft is inviting them in and Microsoft is embracing what they have to say. And relating this all back to Halo, by the way, this just really shows there's a lot of components going on here. It's not so straightforward. Uh, and I think it's 
very important to keep an eye on what's going on with Halo Studios and the people involved with these projects, including Microsoft and the role they might play with their sort of, well, subtle but not so subtle inclusion of DEI in pretty much everything they do. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time.